I'm Ryan Whitney, and you're watching the Nasty Knuckles Pod. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws Podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Regarelia? How you doing? Oh, great. You? Pretty solid. Missed you Sunday night yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's late one. It was not a late one. It was at fucking six o'clock at night. Well, you know I'm winding down <laughs> for the <laughs> evening. You better start winding up. You got to come to games because teams are complaining. Of what? Well, you show up in the playoffs. I'm like, hey, he pays his money. He's on the roster. <laughs> teams well, are complaining. They actually were. Some people. I don't believe it. I, I swear I'm not kidding. Rob told me. There's only four teams in the league. It, you know, it's There's true. only four teams in the league. <laughs> what? No. Bro, it's the biggest league going now. Everybody <laughs> added people. Did it expand? I'll expand. A couple expansion teams? Move, a couple expansion teams moved up. Oh, well, I'll be, ba- I'll be back. I finally uh, scored the other night, thank God. Jesus. I Ripper? Mean, I couldn't. No, it was, no. It was just a sick play by someone else. I think I don't know if, Ron, if Ronnie passed it to me or... Uh, Foxy, but anyway, I had an empty net, and I, oh. I made sure I put it in the net and not over the glass into that net like I did the week before, which was very embarrassing. But anyway. It happens. It happens. Um, what's going on with you? It's getting primed up for this weekend. Yes, can't wait. Fans of Philly, we're heading to Boston, baby. Ooh. Big birthday weekend birthday for weekend. you and I. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're getting after it. <sighs> Better believe it. <laughs> You're not. 10.30, 10.30 in, in the if bed. If you try to go to bed at 10.30, I will bang on your door the whole night. I told Joe that. <laughs> you didn't can't tell, tell Nasty what room I'm in. Yeah, I'll know. Yo. I got the itinerary. You got And I got, got the, the, you got the I room got list? list. I got the rooming list. <laughs> the they manifest? Let, they let me do it. They uh, let me do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't wait, man. Fans it's of gonna Philly. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be awesome. I feel like we're just with everyone. We get to do it again. Yeah, why soon. not? Indoors. Uh, Indoors this time. It will not be as cold. I can oh, guarantee you that. I'm pumped. Um, can't wait, though. Seriously. Best fans of Philly, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, Flyboys, since we last were together, hadn't really lit it up. Two, two, and one. I kind of blame you. Yeah. But, uh, no, the last game uh, against Tampa there it was a bit of a shit show. Seven nothing. Wheels fell off a little bit there, but uh, things got a little, a little heated. A little heated. Uh, Torts didn't want to leave. <laughs> flexing the bench. Yeah, he flexed for a few minutes with his cast on too. Oh yeah, and, thumb up and um, sideways. But like Baller was saying, uh, I had we had a my uh, the Rebels. We had the game, so I didn't get to watch all the game. I saw some highlights, but uh, Baller was filling me in on the. The refs weren't the greatest that night, and on top of their game, and Torts had enough. So, is that a record getting tossed ten minutes into the game? You think? I could be actually. I mean, it's pretty that's, impressive. That's pretty quick. <laughs> that's pretty quick. <laughs> well, I guess you're down four Cobb at ten minutes in. Like, well, I did uh, see the emotions. That sh- emotions I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really high. I remember I was I was on the bench. I remember just checking the score to see yeah. you know how it was going, and I saw it. I'm Ooh, like, oh, that's that, a tough one. That might be the, the Phillies playing baseball down there <laughs> <laughs> first ten minutes, but yeah, they they uh, they like I said, they had started. Uh, the week off for the week is about a week and a half ago now, but they lost to the Caps down in Washington. Um, and then they had a win against the Senators at home. Finally, we, we beat Captain Claude. He used to be the captain, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, lost to the Blues in a shootout. I was actually at that game. Got to see uh, uh, Hazy and Schenner. Yeah, I saw the pick uh, with LV. Was, yeah, LV had to get a picture. I let him stay up late that night. I. The next Paid morning, for it was it tough next morning him I'm up. sure. But, uh, yeah, I saw uh, Steve Ott as well. Talked to oh, him for yeah. a few minutes. He said he'd jump on this summer. Oh, cool. We got to grab uh, him, yeah. Yeah, he's, I, I said, don't worry. I said, uh, Baller put up a little 
little thing of you <laughs> with uh yeah well of his son i said i think he might be he goes no 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 i heard your son's fucked up too chief told me oh, yeah. i said well you're right about yes. that uh but uh i told him we you know we always talk about the clip of him and g kind of talking oh yeah after face g off. just you know you, you taking this face off ha huh, top five <laughs> You know, but uh, he was laughing. But he said he would jump on with us. But it was good. It was a pretty good game. Um, Joe Watson got to talk to him. He was at the game. Bob the Hound Kelly saw Billy Barber, Brian Prop signed a thing and gave me a good. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Give you a little little coin too. No, he didn't give me the coin. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were trying to get me. Uh, But anyway, um, then they go down to Florida. Big win in Florida. Mm -hmm. one of the best teams in hockey, obviously, and uh, find a way to win that game two to one and late goal by Hathaway, just grinding and working, stop yawning, um, wake him up just all the way. Just get a little oxygen. <laughs> a little oxygen. Uh, then, like we were just talking about the Tampa game, wheels fell off a little bit. We had Leonardo DiCaprio saying, <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving. Oh, man. I, I can't tell tell you how many times I watched that clip of <laughs> <laughs> just zooming in on Torts' face. like Because I'm thinking, like, you know, wires crossed there, Ben. The wires definitely crossed, but you know when you're in denial that it's like <laughs> it's not happening. Like there's no way he's actually kicking me out right now. Yeah. It's like nah, I'll just hold my yeah. hold my ground right now, and you could just see in his eyes, you know, yeah. like, just like slowly but surely. He like, was not. Do happy. I actually do? Do I actually got to leave the bench? I think I better go. I better sneak he, off. I thought this a pretty stiff penalty though. Yeah. Like, come on. Obviously, they were trying to send a little messy. The only thing I don't like about it, we've talked about this before. Quickly, I just. I feel like the refs have a hard job. Let's yeah. not kid ourselves. It's tough. But I also think that they should be held accountable sometimes. Like When they're god awful. When they're that bad. And, yeah. and maybe, you know, they do get shit. We don't see it. Or I think they do. I, 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 yeah. I think they're critical of their performances from yeah. the top there. But, yeah. but yeah. And, and, you know, from a ref's perspective, well, obviously from the losing team's perspective too, like no one wants to be down 4 nothing, And usually when those – games go that way yeah things get out of hand in one way shape or form so yeah clearly the flyers aren't going to be happy with anything at right. that point but um yeah, yeah a couple of weak calls will will flip flip a club upside any down coach. yeah any or any coach and especially yeah. if it keeps if it, you know three penalties to nothing or you know i'm not saying that's that was the case in that game but like Three pretty bad calls. Yeah. I just thought that storyline too back in T Bay, oh, oh, well, 2004. Cup teams team up there, there just, just laughing. Like, eh? They're oh, like, oh, like, yeah, we've th- seen this. Yeah, things haven't <laughs> changed one bit. Remember when DZ told us he's really calmed down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, I, well he, he's, he's dipping not as calm in. Now, yeah, but I love it. I do love it. It makes torts torts, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you, you got to appreciate the, the emotion and the passion, yep. you know. And then you got Dan Hilferty covering yep. his costs. Yeah. I think <laughs> Coach Chip. Coach Chip says, says no. He's like, well, you take it. We didn't know that much. We didn't think it was going to be that stiff. <laughs> <laughs> that was classic. Oh, I think you can take good. this one. That yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but the trade lo- deadline came and mm-hmm. passed, and um, Flyers made a few moves. Danny um, extended Nick Sealer, and I think we had talked about that, you and I. We, I really like his yeah. game. I like what he brings, and I'm happy to see the guy get some money, too. You know, <laughs> Yeah, he earns Great it, Great deal, four, four-year deal, 2.7. He's a flyer, um, man. He I is mean, a flyer. And he's proven pr- proven to the fan base he belongs. Yeah. It's not like you know he's here half a season, and then you're going to have to be forced to extend him. So right. I think the fly- Flyers and the, and the fans know what you're going to get out of Seal, so lock him up and he's a great guy yeah everybody on the team loves him mm-hmm. like uh you know we've talked to all the guys about him he's he's a he's a team favorite guy you yeah. know in the room and obviously like you said he just he's willing to get his background over for the team uh no doubt. like he, he's he's got balls boy as, as torch did say we got balls we got balls. um he's traded sean walker there was a lot of talk about that but you get you know like you end up getting a first round pick for him and that's that's pretty good that's really good to me, uh, Danny Danny did a great job with that one. Yeah, uh, you, you pick up Ryan Johansson, which we don't really know what's going on with him. Picked his salary up for this year, and, and maybe another baller. Yeah, another. But uh, no one really knows what's going on there. Maybe he's hurt. I don't know. Yeah, not going to speculate, but keeping that one quiet. Yeah, whatever it is. But to get a first rounder for Wallace yeah, I mean, is great. considering he was a, essentially a cap dump. Yeah. Yeah, for LA, yeah, exactly. Coming to the Philly, so yeah, I think you couldn't you couldn't lock up that guy. There's no space, right? right? And you know, he only been here half a season too. So I think 
It's best case scenario, honestly. Pretty damn good job by Danny. Um, he goes out and he, he trades a fourth round pick uh, for Eric Johnson or EJ. Had EJ a couple times oh, yeah, for the did. USA. Yeah, veteran guy. Um, got him from Buffalo, obviously. So you know, hopefully he's going to help in the room and and um, you know his play as well. You know, he's he's won a cup. You know, yeah. so uh, it's cool to see him come. I can't wait to run into him. I haven't seen him in a couple of years, obviously, but uh, and we traded our buddy Wade Allison. Alley Just Cats, things haven't yeah. really worked out for him here, so hopefully things go better for him. We got Garyanov, who did play in Tampa, um, and uh, Wade goes to uh, Nashville. Yeah, um, yeah, he needs a fresh start. Yep, yeah. and hopefully he gets a call up. I know uh, Baller said he played down uh, the other night, but uh, we love Wade, great kid. Yeah, so wish him the best. Absolutely, stay healthy. Yeah, be, stay healthy, man. Be back up, no time. Yep. Uh, some of the bigger, lot, actually, a lot of action the other day, but some of the bigger trade, probably one of the biggest, is Hannafin goes to Vegas along with Thomas Hurdle. Not How they doing pickups. this? How they doing this, baller? <laughs> They're cheating. But, you know, they say if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's They're right. not cheating, but just, again, here we go. Like, they go for it, man. And, you know, they got some guys on IR, obviously, so they're able to fit them in. But, yep. wow. Creative. Wow, creative. Hey, Riggs. Oh, my arm. I broke my arm. You're going to sit for a couple weeks. Don't oh, worry yeah. about it. So yeah. we can get a couple players in. got to get creative with those injuries. I wonder, you know, like uh, – our guest today, uh, he had a lot to say about it. He was kind of laughing. He had a post. He, were, he you know, he posted something um, about like this is crazy, but it's the league. You can't blame Vegas. They're playing within the rules because it's allowed. So um, they'll be tough. Yeah. They'll be tough again. Yeah, not bad additions. Not bad at all. And uh, Carolina ends up getting Gensel from uh, Jake Gensel from the Penguins and it seemed like a lot of guys weren't very happy about that but um, Carolina trying to make their squad better I mean this East is it's going to be tough either way you mm -hmm. know like but uh, they make that move I don't think Sid was real happy about it and the Penguins had a tough game the next day uh, they got smoked and Whatever it is, what it is, but the Pens aren't going to make the playoffs anyway. It's you don't kind think so? of a, I don't no, I don't. You don't if last don't, second push, I don't think they got to push in them. <laughs> you I really don't. Steam left. I don't think they have one. <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, our good buddy Pat Maroon gets moved. Yeah, uh, to Boston with our other buddy Jimmy Montgomery. So that's pretty. I think cool. It's a great pickup. Yeah, it is, I like man. That. Like, dude, I I have a feeling they have a great room anyway with Marshawn and, yep. and and Pasta. He's so damn funny. But you bring the big rig in there, and um, he's a winner. We know that. He's a winner, yeah. And then, obviously, Luch not coming back this year. So, I mean, bring in a big bod there yep. for the stretch. I think uh, he fits in perfectly. So, yeah, um, I think uh, it's a great move. I think it's a good move, too. Mm -hmm. um, our good friend, JVR, James Van Reems, yeah. like, congrats, brother, with 1,000th game last week. Wanted to say that. Yeah. Um, just a pro. Yeah. Pro, takes care of himself, does the right things. Love that guy. Yeah. Happy to see him doing well, too. He's yeah, playing absolutely. Well in yeah, that's, that's a lot of games. Yeah. You got to be doing something right. Yeah. Well, when he left here the first time, he had a year left. Yeah, there. I know, right? Can't play in the league. What we were told, yeah. Trying to turn him into some sort of beastly power forward of some sort. Well, that, that and his hip. Oh yeah, you remember that yeah, oh, yeah. thing? He won't be here, but uh, anyway, yeah. he's either here or there because yeah. he played a thou. Yeah, right. Um, Impressive. Congrats. Made a little bit of cake too along the way. Oh, no Rain doubt. Daddy. No um, doubt. Your boy. We talked about last week. We were hoping that Rimpe was going to get a little Tilly Saturday Night Fights with Ryan Reeves, and it happened. Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah, Hockey Night in Canada. Um, you had talked about uh, him with his. I'd asked you last. You know, last time about his uh, his length and all that stuff. You you being a, a tough guy fighter. Uh, How do you think he did in that? I think he did really well, and that was the first time we talked about. As you just mentioned, going into it, he hadn't really used his his reach at all. He was okay. fighting square and taking more punches than he than he should have. Yeah, I thought he did a good job of at least the start of the fight. Reach, you know, get, getting that reach and stringing Reeves out and pushing him back. Um, you know, eventually, I think his arm, you know, started caving in a little bit, and, it, yeah. and Reeves got a few shots in. But I mean, showing up in, in Toronto yeah. Saturday night after how many fights he had, had leading up to that, I mean, hell of a job. And you know, again, going to New Jersey yesterday, he 
He's playing well, in Jersey. You know, yeah. playing in Jersey and McDermott's, you know, knocking on his door. And I think Lavi obviously told him not to. Yeah, I would think so. I also wonder, too, I was going to ask you another thing about that. Uh, well, I think McDermott was going after him for the Bastion hit yeah. a few weeks ago. So they're in New York last night, and he tries to get him to go. I have a feeling Lavi told him, don't worry about it. But then the hit which I think he's going to get some Oh yeah, he's going to get some because games. he gets the chicken wing up. He's big enough as it is. And yeah. he, he did if he just goes in with his shoulder, maybe not because he's so tall, but either way, then I think he should probably answer the bell there, but whatever, he didn't. Yeah. But what I was going to ask you is do you think maybe I don't know if he's only played how many games, 8, 9 games. I don't I'm not sure exactly what it is, but after those fights with D'Lo and, and uh, Olivier and, and uh, Reeves and that, you, th- you think maybe a little bit now his naps aren't as easy to take because he's kind of put himself there. You know, he's been fighting everyone. Yeah. So I, I just wonder if – I'm sure I would think Lavi told him, hey, don't worry about it, just play. But do you think that's starting to sneak into his head a little bit? Oh, Jesus. You know, I'm doing a good job of doing this, but, like, it's not as – Easy, you know. Oh well, yeah, no, I mean, for sure. It's a t- the toughest job to have in the show. Yeah, those first hockey. four, five, six games, like pure adrenaline, right? right? You fight and you get out there and you're doing anything you can to hang on, and then it's like another game comes around, and another this guy's tough a guy, big right? Man. I mean, legitimate. <laughs> like it's like because I was thinking, like for sure, Lavi told him not to. I ha- you know, he had to have. Right. But also, it's like I'm thinking, like it's okay to rest. Yeah. Too. Like, you know, you've been right. very active. Very. The, your first 10 games in the NHL, whatever, you know, six fights and, you know, legitimate tough guys. Um, and you know, But that being said, you know, there was an alter, not an altercation. He obviously got, uh, he ran Bastion over the game before. So, but it was, there was no suspension or nothing on it. He gets kicked out of the game and it was a clean hit, which is crazy. Yeah. He hit just, him too hard. Just hit him too hard. So, obviously, they were getting, trying to get revenge on it. Lavi had to have said something to him, but nonetheless, like you know, the game goes on and again, chicken wing, which looked right. it looked like maybe the guy pulled up a little bit, but nonetheless, either way, he yeah. he put the the wing out there. He was going to get some games. I think at that point, like maybe you even now to. now you kind of got to, but at that po- point too, the refs are in there and it's like yeah, it's pretty hard to get, get out of the game him. and <laughs> well, deal with the next game. You yeah, know, right. Know, like if but, they play again, but you know, baller baller had a. Um, through a stat out of us, he, he's he's got fifty four pims, and he's his total ice time's like fifty six minutes. So he spent as much time in the box he has on ice, but he hasn't played bad at all. Like no, he's, he's, he's been out there. Uh, he's like doing he's out there last right. night, yeah, yeah uh, for a goal, and um, you know, he's just he's a he's a big man. He's keeping guys to say honest. I mean, keep, uh, at the very least, he's keeping guys um, j- just. Yeah, well, I say honest. I mean, like, yeah. you know where this guy's at because right. he's running you. Yeah. He's on the ice. Yeah, he's going to hit you. He's going to keep your head on a swivel for sure, and, you know, or not. And <laughs> <laughs> get the wingy poo. He's got yeah, the wingy. Yeah, get the wingsy. <laughs> yeah. But, but, I mean, he can skate. Yeah. I think he's improving every game, and the fact that Lavi's playing him is, you yeah. know, a testament to clearly he's doing something right, sir. So. Definitely, probably giving him some confidence too. Yeah, you know, getting, a, getting some. He's not getting a ton of ice time, but he's also in the box a lot as well. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. And it might be time. It's that time now. It's that time. I'm ready. I'm ready to. Is this one fifty? One fifty? Can you believe Debo. it? Debo. 150? It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> One word, Debo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Their boy, Ryan Whitney. Yes. Winner. Hey, beauty. My man. Let's go. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by Garage Beer. Check out their beer-flavored beer. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Suttlemer. And this week, we are absolutely honored to have this young man with us a former fifth overall pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins back in 2002, co-host of probably the number one hockey podcast (laughs) in the world, Spittin' Chicklets, a veteran of 481 NHL hockey games, the genius behind putting pink lemonade into vodka (laughs) and turning it into an unbelievable business. Yes, Uh, Pink Whitney. Uh, Everyone drinks it everywhere I go. Reminds me of it. And uh, also a silver medalist at the 2010 Winter Olympics. My buddy, your friend, 
Mr. Ryan Whitney. Winner, what's up, brother? What's going on, boys? Nasty. I don't know. You might be hanging out at some young places if everywhere you go, people are crushing <laughs> the pink wit. Well, bro, I'm just trying to feel young, man. You know what I'm saying? I have it in my bar, too. This year, yeah. I have it in my bar, too. I'm not going to lie. You're yeah. my boy. Hey, I love I it. It's it. awesome. Man. No, boys, thanks for having me on. Big fan. I appreciate it. Long overdue. So uh, I'm looking forward to it here. Nasty Knuckles, my my uh, my representation in Philly is now complete. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we man, we, we appreciate your time. Uh, we know you're busy. Uh, what, what's going on, man, besides, you know, your third child coming here soon? Yep. Yep. A um, little bit like month and a half, maybe a, a seven weeks away from that. So as Coates already said to me, you know, no more man to man coverage. So I'm in one. So <laughs> it'll be yeah. uh, six, three and a newborn. But I mean, that's a lot. I know a lot of buddies who've had like four, two and a newborn. Right. So yeah. at least I got the older guy. He's pretty much uh, on his own and can handle himself. And then the middle guy will we'll be the middle guy. Wyatt, he's a nut. So number three, we don't know. <laughs> We don't know. Another boy, and then the madness continues, or a girl, and the whole household changes. So I'm excited. Okay. I mean, it's interesting because she told me, yeah, I'm pregnant. I was like, oh, when's the due date? She's like, May 8th. I was like, holy shit. That's like the end of the first round when we were just rocking through playoff hockey every night. Yeah, yeah. I was That's like, true. we need a night nurse, babe. We need a night nurse. So we'll see <laughs> how that goes. Wow. Congrats. Awesome, man. Yeah, congratulations, thank you. Thank you, brother. Unbelievable. No, but other than that, not much, man. We're just, you know, doing the weekly shows. You guys know what that grind's all about. Playoffs is the most exciting time for all of us. You just kind of can't wait. I, I, I said the other day, it's kind of like from January 15th on. Coach, you remember, it's like those are just the dog days, right? Like oh, game, yeah. game 45 to like 65, 70, you're just like, holy shit. Thank God for that two week payment we're getting just shoved in our <laughs> bank accounts, auto deposit. But it's it's actually now we're getting to like spring. March is here or mid March yeah. now, and then the excitement of playoffs. So I just I I can't wait. But I, I will say it's been an amazing NHL season. Like it I has. feel like every year there's more storylines, um, more things going viral, and it's just like turned into a little bit more of a soap opera that I think was a ridiculous thought when we played. But now it's like we're in the media and we're, we enjoy it. We want those you know, those drama filled moments and those those off ice storylines. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You you guys, man, <clears throat> talking about your your show there. You you guys are around what four eighty seven. I mean, you you yeah. you guys have been going for a while, man. Uh, when you guys started that, like, how how did it all come about? Like, uh, it it was it was really random. Um, Biz and I were at training camp tryout. We were on PTOs with the Blues. And, um, you know, neither one of us had anything going. But we had known each other because we played in Wilkes-Barre um, for a minute together. We were never actually on the Penguins together because I think he was oh, really? up when I was when I was hurt. So we had spent time in the minors, though, and, and become buddies. I When I met him, we've told the story a bunch. I was like, this kid's a fucking idiot. I was <laughs> like, he's the biggest <laughs> OHL idiot I've ever met. And then um, became good friends. And then he ended up getting put on waivers and Keith Yandel's one of my closest friends and he, yeah. you know, Phoenix or Arizona picked him up. He's like, what's this guy's deal? I go, you're going to hate his guts when you meet him. But two weeks later, you'll love him. So it's like, and he goes, buddy, you're dead, right? This kid sucks. But then they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're close as well now. And, and Biz, Biz is, 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 is admittedly or admits he was a complete moron back then, you know, just that loud guy. But so was I in a sense in the locker room. So it was just a friendship. Um, that really became, you know, more and more and closer and closer as we went along. So then we kind of reconnected at the Blues camp and we didn't know what, what was going to happen. Right. You go to a PTO. Yeah. Odds are you're not getting signed. You're kind of hoping maybe we get an AHL deal. And and we were just hanging out every day. We were like the court jesters. We were just the clowns for all the Blues guys. <laughs> and we both had, had a couple friends there, but we got to know everyone and they hung. They, they kept us around till the very end. But. Throughout that training camp, you know, practice ends, you got nothing to do. We just hang in each other's room, go have lunch. And we were talking about doing something after. And even talking to Yans, too. It was like some sort of uh, of show. And, and I mean, we didn't even know about podcasts then. They weren't really a right. thing. Yeah, but some true. sort of show where where we'd, we'd go to a rink with our gear, get dressed, and then never go on the ice, and then just shoot the shit, take it off, and get have a shower with the boys. So it was just one of those, like, what are we going to do? We got to do something. Yeah. And then um, I went off that year. Where'd I go? I signed with Florida, 
And Biz signed, I don't even remember. I think that's the year he ended up winning the Calder Cup. Right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right, Manchester. Manchester yeah. Yeah. So we, we ended up, it worked out well. Like I got a, I got a one-way that year. Now, granted, I, I lasted about a month in Florida before they sent me to the minors. But still, I had a one-way for a Dang million. It. I was like, all right. <laughs> and that's when I actually started playing a ton of golf because I went to San Antonio. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm over this, right? And the coach, Tom Rowe, I don't know if you ever had him, coach. He was a nut. He was a great guy, but then he'd be a lunatic. I, I think he's like bipolar. So yeah, I was getting this. healthy, scratched. And even when I was playing, I wouldn't pregame nap. I'd just go play golf the next year to Russia. And then got back from there, went over to Sweden. And after two games, I was like, I can't even skate. I'm horrible. This is it. I was, it's done. I, I retired after the first period of my second game in Sweden and then sat on the bench, enjoyed it the last two periods, called my dad after. And I think for every guy um, who played in the NHL, most of the time your dad and your mom have a huge deal. And I just called them right after the game, and I was pretty emotional, like, yeah, dad, that's it. And it was a, it was a nice call to make. It was kind of hard to make and, and weird making it. But mm -hmm. then I, I, I was more excited because I found this passion and love for golf where I think a lot of times guys retire, and we've talked a, a lot. It's like it's, it's, it's hard. You're, what are you going to do? Now, luckily, I had, I had made good money. So I was more like it was like September. It was probably like September 10th ish when I retired. And I was like, I'm just going to go play golf all fall. I'm going to play 36 a day. This is great. <laughs> and so I went home and I was like in a great mood. And then once winter hit, I was like, all right, I kind of got to find something to do. Yeah. And I, I, I talking to my it was my girlfriend at the time, my and now my wife. She's like, well, what about like a podcast or something? And I was like, oh, me and Biz had talked about doing a show. And so I sent out a tweet. It's, we, we've put it up like yearly every on the anniversary about wanting to start a, a podcast. And then I tagged uh, Army, Colby Armstrong, and I tagged Biz. Tag Biz. What do you guys think? And Biz responded, I'm still playing. I, I can't do it yet. And then Army, I don't know what he said. I think he was working at Sportsnet already or something. But then Rear Admiral, the Rear Admiral, the <laughs> lunatic, he's like, I'll do it. I didn't even really know him. We'd met two times. <laughs> and and thank God, I actually told him, I'm like, dude, if I think if we'd gone for lunch, like I would have just been like, I ain't working with this guy. He's out of his <laughs> mind. He's pitching in everywhere. But he's a hockey fan. He's a he's a he's just like a normal dude hockey fan. He never played. I like that aspect of mm -hmm. you got a guy who played and you got a guy who didn't. So you get different opinions and you got stories from each guy that the other guy may not know anything about. So um, we started and we started randomly just me and him. He had like a like a mixer i don't even know and then the second episode we didn't even have like a microphone like we shared a microphone on his couch it was just and and there was never a thought of it being like i i, I never for one second thought i would make one dollar from it it wasn't it was just like something to do right and, um, right and and then uh and then funny enough grinelli our producer we had um we had a uh an episode where RA pressed record and then we did like a 45. It was usually about 45 minutes, then maybe an hour. And then he looked down at the end. He's like, dude, it, it stopped recording like four uh, minutes. Just, has that ever happened? Uh, did, that, that did it happen to you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. Worse because yeah. you, you can't you can't even no. think about doing it again. It's like you not can't. authentic. <laughs> and and I was like, oh my God. And no shit. He goes, buddy, I got an email yesterday from some kid that was like hey if you ever need help with the because Grinelli said he sent the email because he would listen and the audio was trash so he's like why don't we have this kid in boom Grinelli's there the next week so it was all very organic like there's wow, no yeah. expectations no planning um guys you know Grinelli gets a job out of nowhere RA and I connect out of nowhere so it's like anytime you you put all this effort and try to plan something. I feel like the more successful things, you're just doing it for fun and you're just not even expecting anything. And and then obviously Biz showed up. And that was yeah. that was kind of the, the end. Because I'm telling you, right now, RA and I and Grinelli be on his couch if we were still even doing it, which I doubt it. But Biz was the business mind. He had the the um kind of the vision to see what he what he thought it could become. He put a lot of work and effort and still does into all the behind the scenes things where I was open with him. I was like, buddy, I, I'm backing you. You're my guy. Go do whatever you need to do. You got my support. Tell me where to be, where, when to be, where. And most of the time I'll make it happen, but I'm not doing shit behind the scenes. And so because he's the way he is very kind of driven and, and obviously he wanted to make some dough. He wanted to try to monetize it. He mm -hmm, hadn't yeah. made as much as I had suck on that biz. And, um, <laughs> 
And it, it was just a really, it was a perfect partnership that, that yeah. we still couldn't have imagined kind of grew into this. Well, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, and obviously so successful. It's, it's a, uh, it's a treat every week. And, and Thank it's you. nice. It, it's nice. Like, <clears throat> obviously we got to know each other, uh, way back in 2010s fucking doesn't seem like it was that long ago but it was I know. and uh, it's 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 better when you actually know the people you know what i yeah. mean like and and just it just makes it obviously just great laughs but great content too and and a uh, hockey you know insight from two guys that played with us you got from this guy i yeah, know what you I were spent. around forever like yeah. you were you, yeah, you know yeah i i i obviously was fortunate enough to do it for fucking 26 years and uh it was great, but uh, we we enjoy the shit out of your show, and no, it's fun. And I and I work, and I'm working with a uh, team in the Nall here. Uh, and Jesus, I'm like every you know every other day. It's like, oh, did you see a uh, Biz and Wit and this and I'm like, hey, fuck boys, there's a Nasty Knuckles podcast going on. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to watch that, I get Riley to laugh sometimes. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they love you guys. It's great, and and they were. I told them. I told them this weekend that you were, you were jumping on and, and they were going, no, no way. And then we have this one kid, he, <clears throat> he's lead disappoints points. His name's Charles Penches. And then uh, he's a stud. He is like, tell, tell Witter the, I want to do the sandbagger. He's like, oh, that's all we hear now. He, he, yeah. Well, he's a scratch. He is a scratch golfer. This kid's he's, he's, he's got the middies, but anyway, um, that's all we hear. We're like, everyone comes out. I want a sandbagger. I want a sandbagger. I'm like, all right, bud, no question. Like when I'm good at golf, I'm good, but I can also be bad. Biz is horrific, but he's kind of clutch. So I'm like, hey, bud, you could be a scratch golfer. All these people, I'm a plus one. That's great. How are you when the cameras turn on? Yeah. yeah. So everything 100%. changes a little bit. Different type and, of pressure. And granted, like we get dummied every time we play like older vets, like Ronick and Hull. I mean, I'm sorry, Ronick and Timu smashed us. Um, Jovo and Jose Theodore, they dummied us. It's like we can get the young guys and kind of get in their head, but those yeah. old guys, it's like they're in our head. Yeah, so it's funny yeah. how it works out age wise, but it, it, it's a lot of fun, like doing something like that, like doing other content pieces. It's it's been a blast. They're not as easily distracted as you guys or the younger generation are, right? <laughs> yes, a little bit easier. And, they, and and they're bullies. They, see the old school. Yeah, way, they just <laughs> yeah, bullied right. us in the room, and they're bullying us on the golf course. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, hey, you didn't get bullied, but I do. Yeah, no, I was lucky enough. I uh, had a pretty pretty solid team, a lot, a lot of a lot of surrounding guys to help uh, beef up the toughness. <laughs> we didn't we weren't we didn't have a shortage of tough guys on our team or no. phantoms and flyers there. At least the early oh. part of those years. Uh, wait, you you mentioned something interesting uh, when you're talking about the beginning of spitting chocolates and you you know how you talked about like you were doing it because you loved it and you you're doing it because it was like it felt right it wasn't about the money and i had recently heard rick rubin who's a pretty famous uh music exec for your beastie boys and whoever else talk about this exact thing when you talk about creating art essentially what you've created is you know some version of art is just is is doing it because it, it's like for you and because it feels right and it, and it, and it just it, it just kind of f fills that void or whatever it is, not because of you're looking at the, your expectation of the outcome and how this thing is going to play out. I thought that was interesting that you said that because I just listened and talk about that and it makes a shitload of sense, right? If you're doing something because you love it and you, and you want to do it and you want to put your heart into it and put yourself out there, well, naturally you build something that's well, uniquely yours. And obviously it's, it, it's grown into something super huge, you know, it's, it's yeah, surreal, it's, really. It, it, it thanks it's so true it's like um i just wanted to stay around the game and mm -hmm. i know i didn't want to coach i mean coaching's hard dude like nhl coaching's hard let alone if you're gonna try to start down and a lot of guys got to start in the coast right like you're riding the buses all this video i mean getting to the nhl you're doing video non-stop you're at the rink sun up to sundown but at least you're flying private but still it's like it, it's a grind i didn't want right. to do that um I guess the other ways to stay in would be like being an agent. I know I don't have that. I, I would at least need a degree from college, I think, which I don't have quite yet. Although I promised my parents I'd do that. I gotta, I gotta go back. <laughs> you gotta go on that. Right? Um, and then what else would there be? Like, I was just like media wise, I, I, I guess that'd be something cool. And I think that's only really the, the only path I could have to be involved. So I was lucky. Uh, I did a year of going up to Toronto on Monday nights and I do sports net. 
I was lucky enough to get that. So kind of getting my foot in the door and being on TV. And then NHL Network called. And I, I think for like a year, maybe two, I'd probably do like 40 to 50 dates, you know, drive up to uh, or down to Secaucus. And, and it was new, in New Jersey. And I'd do like three nights, head home, and then two weeks later, go back. But it, it was cool to be around the game. The people there were great. But I was like, oh, man, I don't. I don't love like you're staying in like kind of a crappy hotel and you know, you're away like three, four nights. And it's just like, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And at that time the pod was starting and I was, I was just like, this is fun. This is exactly mm. what I want to do. I'm just talking about the game. I don't really have to travel. Although now we're traveling all the time, but that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> but I was like, I I'm in the game. I don't know if anyone's listening and I'm getting to kind of at least still be a part of it. What's funny is, though, at the time that it began, I still knew a lot of guys in the NHL. And every year, I know less and less and less. Yeah. So one part of it's great in that um, as guys get out of the league, I don't really like I, I didn't ever want to like it's hard to like dog players or teams when you played. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of that guy right now calling guys out because like. Yeah, you have to do it when you're really talking about the game. If a guy's playing like shit, you got to talk about it. But I didn't love it. Whereas yeah. every guy that I know gets out of the league, I'm like, all right, I don't really give a shit anymore. I don't even know <laughs> yeah. these kids. I'm still going to be fair, right? And like, and, and give my honest opinion. And I'm not just going to sit there and shrivel someone. But in the end, like, buddy, if you're making eight sheets and you're playing horrible, yeah. Yeah. You got, it, you're yeah. not an authentic show if you're not at least bringing up the fact this guy's not carrying his weight. So yeah. in the beginning of doing it, it was just like you said, it was just it was just something I wanted to do. And and I don't know, like it's kind of like growing up, like making the NHL, like looking back, all I did, I don't know, maybe from like 11, 10 to 11, I would just shoot pucks. I'd get home from school, I'd go outside, I'd rollerblade. Then at night I'd shoot pucks and I was doing it nonstop every day. And looking back, I was working. And I was mm -hmm. practicing, but it was never practice in your mind. Right. It was yeah. like it was never at all what what you look at is like, oh, I got to go do that. I was like, oh, I can't wait to go do that. And then you get older and you realize like, holy shit, all I was doing was practicing. But I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's probably what a lot of successful people will say in terms of their career is like mm -hmm. they were doing a lot of the hard work that it takes, but they enjoyed every second. Yeah, yeah for sure. so that's it yeah I, that, that's the key right is yeah, you, yeah. You're, you're you're living it yeah you're, you're owning it and without exactly what you said without thinking or making it seem like it's actual work where you're it's not a pain it. in the ass to you exactly right, right. it's crazy it's, it's just how it kind of works out i think everyone would tell you that mm -hmm. yeah winter i want to um i want to ask you about uh when you were uh you know, your, your uh, draft and everything. And then there's the lockout year and you play a full year, obviously in American league, which was probably the best league in the world that year mm -hmm. with everyone yeah. that was in it, <clears throat> obviously. Uh, he played for <laughs> French Mike. <laughs> yep. Yeah. French, <laughs> I, Mike. Speaking, French Mike. That's what all the guys called him when he was here. My, my last year with the team, he, you know, he was here with uh, Vino, but uh, I was going to just talk, ask you a little bit about the, even even though it was the American League, there was a pretty good rivalry there with the Penguins and and, and the Phantoms, and you guys had some toughness. We had some toughness. Uh, I think they had Scroy, uh, Elaine David Nazardine Co was David Kochi, Kochi, right, and, yeah. and Bushy. Uh, we there. had a kid. Yeah, he was there, actually, yeah. he was a part of Philly. Remember Guillaume Lefebvre? Yeah, all oh, right, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Good. I had a soft spoken French kid, like talk like this, played the guitar, and then he was a yeah. lefty who would chuck him. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, I think Gratz he, put him to sleep one night, did he not? Yeah, Is that in the playoffs, sir? Yeah, he, 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 I, I think that might have been a little, like you and Gratz might have been a little <laughs> above his weight, but right. there'd be some guys that were like, you know, middleweights where you're like, holy shit. And he'd he, he he throw he some thought, bombs. I, I remember yep. I remember when he was a rookie and he came in, like you said, and he, you know, just so quiet. And I remember the first time he got in a fight, we were like, whoa, yeah, I didn't from, see bro. that yeah. coming, man. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, the left, like, yeah. holy shit, Gee. But yeah, man, I, I just, I remember, uh, that's when I kind of, <clears throat> I remember, I think we went up, I think we were up in the series and then they were interviewing you. And I remember seeing an interview and you were like, we're like the Red Sox, you know, we're, we're coming back. And I was like, I like this guy, I like yeah. the fucking way he's thinking, you know, but obviously <laughs> that was the year the Sox won it too. That that's was right. Year. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Year. They, Cause yep. I remember we were in, uh, we were in Norfolk game seven against the Yankees. And we got off the ice. It might have been like an earlier game. 
and we had this guy Jimmy Morlock who was like the media guy for Wilkes Bear, and he's and he was a diehard Yankees fan. He's like, the Red Sox are up four nothing already. I was like, holy shit! So that was that season. But you bring up that league. Best thing that ever could have happened to me in my career was the lockout that year because um, I had been there when my college season ended the year prior. I turned pro and joined Wilkes Bear, and we actually went to the Calder Cup Finals. We got yep. swept by Milwaukee, but it was it was it was sick for me. Like I was playing and. You know, we went a long way. I was like, oh, my God, getting an experience of, like, playoff hockey. And it wasn't at all like the next season when all these guys came down. But that next year, at least I knew the pro game a little bit. And I was I was familiar with a lot of the teammates, so that helped me. And the biggest thing was there was no worry of getting called up. Like, I don't know how it would have gone if, if I was playing real well 20 games in and guys are getting called up. And then all you're thinking about is, I don't want to be here. I should be up there. But that whole season, it was like, no, this is it. This is the NHL for everyone. And yep, every man. league, every team was stacked. I, 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 I would say on average, the next year in the NHL, every team in the AHL probably had like four to six guys on the NHL. Oh, yeah. Team. We, oh, yeah. Flyers had a, yeah, had a lot. I remember the like, whole team was decimated. <laughs> yeah. The and, and the Binghamton had like the best team of all time with like Spezza and um, Volchenkov was down there. Um, mm -hmm. Who was that, that centerman that was awesome? Was he French? I, don't, I can't think of his name right now. Oh, Chris Kelly was there. Chris yeah, Kelly, they had, yeah, he was there. They had a ton of guys. Vermette. Right. An Anton oh, Vermette was there. Vermette, yeah. And um, we, beat them. There. we beat them in the first round. We were down 2-0. Wow. Chris Neal was running around. He knocked out like four guys in the series. But we came back and we won four straight. And it was it was sick. It was like the best feeling. We'd had a long season. And um, I'd had a good good rookie year. Like French Mike. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I used to be like, I can't stand this guy. And I get older and I and I take I'm more nine years retired. And this September coming up, I'm like, fuck, he was a pretty good coach, though. Like, yeah, he yeah. could be a prick, but like he he knew how to get guys to like be a pro. How, he taught guys how to be a pro. And it was through kind of like torture at times. Torture is not the right word, but it, it was exhausting. And, and he never let you get comfortable. But looking back, it's like he did a hell of a job. And even yeah. when he got to Pittsburgh, like we were horrible when he came in, Sid and uh, me and Sid were rookies together. He came in when Ed Olchuk got fired and then we played like better hockey the second half. And then that next year we made the playoffs. Like he was, he, I don't, I don't know if it, he ever would have got him over the top. We got to the cup finals that second year. And then the next year they got gassed and Bilesman came in and they won. I wasn't there either, but he was a way better coach than I think at times then I gave him credit for. But yeah. that season, man, we ran into the Phantoms, and you fucking got Carter and Richards. And was, <laughs> I was like, this is impossible. Yeah, right. How did this happen? <laughs> Remember game six? Game six in Philly, we were up like 4-2 going into the third. You guys won. Yeah. You scored, four. didn't you? Didn't you score? No, you had a I think we had a big hits there. Grad, Grad scored, yeah. yeah you're Grad lying. scored. Johnny was double shifting his line because they, was the Eagles on your line? Yeah, we were just getting on the they four check. Yeah, running, just... banging, and oh, you guys were was... you guys were animals. But I remember <laughs> I was like, "What just happened? I thought we were going game seven. <laughs> <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> what just <laughs> happened? And it was funny because after that game, I remember I don't know if it was Nazardine or Rob Scuderi, like someone's like they're winning it. Like they're fucking that team's loaded and getting those two kids like yeah they came out yeah. of junior buddy and they were like ten year NHL vets in the AHL totally. playoffs. I was like, yeah. I remember Richards. I was like, this kid is like a fucking dog. Like in your face. He was what nineteen, maybe yeah. twenty. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was an amazing experience though that whole season. And I uh Colby Armstrong and Merles they have a podcast within our umbrella called Game Notes now. Yeah, and and like we often talk on the road. We'll have dinner. It's like that. That might have been my my most fun year playing hockey. Uh, it was really? just a blast. Like you play yeah. Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday night. The boys went out, and it was just like a close group of of guys yeah. that yeah. They got to experience that. Uh, that's, totally, that's that was probably my it, favorite year yeah, too. Yeah, honestly, really? talk about that. A yeah, lot. it yeah. was just like I mean, it was my first full year in the American League, and well, obviously we we went on to win the the Calder Cup, but the team itself, like John awesome. Stevens, like just the chemistry. I never been. On, I don't think I've been on a better team overall. Like. Just the way who was, was that veteran D man who was nasty? John the, Slaney. Yeah, John that Slaney, guy was smooth. Yeah. He was. Oh, you had smooth. vets. You had young guys. Yeah, you had every, everything net, you needed. Yeah, both ending. We had yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, uh, Nitty was uh, and Taro Nittimaki was uh, yeah. in the finals. We went into uh, we went we played Chicago and and uh, remember that first period. 
they they just seemed not that we were slow. Christ, we had Patrick Sharp too. I mean, like we were <laughs> we were loaded. And I remember after that first, we had this player. I don't know if you remember him, uh, Witter. His name is Ben Stafford. He was like third, third yeah, line college guy. Yeah, fourth yep. line center. But man, could he wheel? He was in the Mighty Ducks. We called him Ducky when he yeah. was a kid. He was one of the extra skaters. But anyway, uh, I remember after the first period, they had like four two on ones, a couple three on ones, and we're like, holy fuck. <laughs> and I remember I was doing a pair of skates and, and staff came out and he goes, Oh boy. <laughs> I said, fuck, thank God for knitting. Yeah. That period, I mean, he <laughs> made about 25 saves. Oh period. yeah. And then what we, we went that the, series go till. It went we swapped them, but it was no it was shit. two one and OT and then one nothing. Yeah, we squeezed, we squeezed and, them and then out we, there. we 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 Got a hold of them pretty good at home. Yeah, uh, that's like when uh last year Florida Carolina when Florida swept and Bruno Moore goes it wasn't a sweep because right, it yeah. was all like one goal games and everyone's like ah it was four nothing but yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a sweep. It was a sweep. Um, Witter, real quick, who the guy that did the radio and I I can't believe I can't remember his name. Tom Grace. Yes. Tom Grace, bro, this guy. <laughs> what a fucking legend and scratch. I remember going to the bars. And he'd come fucking in there like Ric Flair, man. No <laughs> this way. Fuck, oh yeah, dude. Just hot dog. Oh, he was like, he was like, um, he was like walking. He was like how, uh, Kingpin walked in years later and took the dude's <laughs> yeah. pizza, and the guy's yeah. like, "Give me my fucking pizza." Remember how he like thought he was the man? <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah. But Gracie was a great guy. He was the voice of the Penguins, and he would. I mean, he was like a homer. But I feel like AHL, like you're you're always gonna be a yeah. homer, right? But describing a fight, I left and I right and I left. Uh, yeah. and, and he had his three piece suits on, and he also did like the travel. He'd be booking the hotels and giving yeah. you the per diem. Oh, he was a character, man. So the, the the reason I bring that up is because I used to love. I would always turn around and look back, and he's calling the game, but he's he's on the radio, <laughs> yeah, his arm yeah, yeah. fucking going, and and I would laugh, and I always talk to him. Johnny Stevens refused to speak with him. So oh, yeah. every time we were in Scranton, uh, Tom would come down. He'd be like, nasty. How's it going? I'm like, Hey bud, you know, shoot the shit for a second. He goes, uh, could you see if John's got a minute for me? And I'll be like, yeah. And I knew the, yeah, I'd walk <laughs> yeah. in. And I'm like, Tom Grace. He goes, Nope. <laughs> I'm like, all right. But I wanted to say the reason I asked you about it mainly was because like you said, he was a Homer, but it was funny. I, I kind of enjoyed like listening to the the game tapes. Like our video guy, Adam Patterson, he's still with the Flyers. He would show them to me. But the one night we had a five on five, and poor Max Talbot ended up with Ben Eager. Oh, I remember oh. that. And man, there all these fights are going on, and he's going nuts. And then Eags grabs a hold of Maxie. And just, I mean, what's Max gonna do? Like he's up, he's outweighed by fucking forty pounds almost. And and Tom Grace goes, "This isn't right." Ben Eager is absolutely feeding max Talbot. <laughs> it was the only time i ever heard him like yeah, exactly like say the truth you know what i mean but he ended up, you know he went to florida for a year he worked with the panthers for a year and, yeah and it was it was the year i was with the panthers oh no way <laughs> yeah and he's wow. like what's up i was like holy shit because i i hadn't been there right like i was at right. st louis camp and got there two days before the first game i was like i didn't even know you were here so that yeah. season, well, I got sent down, but but at least at the beginning, I was like, this is a little reunion. Yeah, None of us right. are Penguins anymore. But uh, I think he went to BC, too. He was always talking about BC. So fuck oh, him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you end up, when you get called up, you were just talking about you and Sid were uh, rookies. Like, obviously, you've over your career, you played with a ton of, like, unbelievable, great players. But was Lemieux just the coolest thing ever? Like, yeah like playing with that man like god yeah it was it was it was intimidating as hell biz tells a <laughs> hilarious story that he like in his camp like he just you know, he, he wheeled the net it was one of the most simple drills in the world like wheel the net center goes low and slow just like it's like a 10 foot pass and biz is just like oh my god and missed him by like eight feet mario <laughs> just kind of looked at him and i even remember my first pass like when it was your turn to pass to him it could be the easiest pass you've ever made but you're just like oh holy yeah. shit <laughs> yeah. and um but i remember i uh i got so i didn't make the team out of camp i had a great camp but that they had 7d on one ways and i was like oh shit but i was pumped because i had a real good attitude like looking back which is kind of surprising the way i was half the time but i was like <laughs> you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna, i'm just gonna go down and i think um mike yo was like dude you gotta just dominate dominate down here and you'll uh -huh. get your chance and I, I had like four assists the first night, but whatever. I played, I played nine games and got called up. 
And um, it was it was great because my first game in, in Jersey, we got a five on three. And I, I got put on the five on three with Recky, Crosby, Lemieux. And, and I don't I might, might have been Ziggy Palfy. I was like, holy shit. Wow. Like, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and I was I was obviously a little nervous to shoot the puck. But but at least I was kind of like getting a chance to do like what I did with my game. And then um, went to Long Island maybe the next night or a couple of nights later. And I, I sent Mario in on a breakaway. And he mi- he missed shockingly, and he just he gave me a tap on the pad. Nice pass, nice pass, kid. And I was wow. like, "Holy shit!" Like he wasn't, <laughs> I, I, you know, he's not talking to me, right? Like he's right. like, but I was just getting that. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and then so uh, yeah. I remember I was I was kind of a loud guy, especially in Wil- Wilkes Bear, like before the game. You know, let's go, boys, let's go. You're throwing out different names, and I was up one of my first home games i'm like all right boys let's go let's go wrecking ball and i was like everyone's like what the fuck like talking to recce calling him wrecking ball <laughs> like my fourth game i remember brooks Horbrook's like shut the fuck up dude <laughs> sure. it's just like i didn't know my role it's so different now too like even being around rooms like there's no more like rookies don't talk like they're the loudest right. guys yeah, but yeah. <laughs> then it was it, it just wasn't like that and pittsburgh that summer had signed it was it was leclerc it was Paul Fee. It was Gonchar. Recky was like it was Lyle Odelon. Like it was an old school veteran club where it was just kind of like, all right, I got to learn my role. Biz one, Biz that camp was like, <laughs> hey Mario, what are you doing for lunch? And everyone's like, buddy, shut the, <laughs> shut your mouth. Chris is like, what, what, bro, what, what? So it's, uh, I, what, I, I learned quickly. But playing with Mario, it was great. It was, it was, it was brutal though because um, he retired that year with the heart. With the heart stuff, and now that, wow. that was it. So I, I think that was around Christmas time, and I got called up, say like end of October. So I probably played with him like 10, 12 games, about a month. But I'll never forget it. Oh yeah, yeah. Playing, I got to play with Crosby and and Lemieux. It's like I know, I insane. know. I, I wasn't. I, I know you say that. I'm not like downplaying Crosby because I, I think he's the best player in the game. But it's uh, just different. It's just, it's yeah, just it's different. It's yeah. Mario. Like, Mario Lemieux, man. And like I, mean, I was I was 10 and like, oh my yeah. god, Mario Lemieux's playing the Bruins <laughs> yeah. tonight. Like, and then I was yeah. on the ice with them. It was wild. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I traveled to Pitt. I was it was my first year with the Flyers because I, I don't think I went to Pittsburgh when I was in Florida that, that first year. But anyway, I was on the bench. Uh and I I think in the first five minutes, he had like th- you know, like three shifts and he had two goals and a helper. <laughs> and I and I just remember I'm sitting there in that fucking tiny bench in the igloo there and i'm like looking and he's he's sitting right on the other side of the glass and, and i said to my dad he's not even fucking sweating <laughs> he's got he's three points in. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like it's what he looked but obviously he was trying but yeah he was just so big oh, and yeah. smoothie poor hexy fuck i think he pulled both his oh, points yeah, yeah right God. off the bone <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but he, he, was, plays, he, he uh, was amazing he plays like golf down in florida and my buddy saw him at this course once and was like this kid was a hockey player huge hockey fan he's like even if i didn't play hockey though like i would have been like who is this guy like he's like six five and he's yeah. enormous and he just has this like presence he's he walks so slow and he's just like so cool it's like this guy yeah. he, he's somebody i don't know yeah. who it is if i don't yeah. follow hockey but that dude is somebody yeah, so. for sure. I mean, you you played a lot of good players. I was, I was just looking at some of the teams and like Team of Solani, Sacco Koivu, I mean, Scott Niedermeyer. Yeah, you yeah. Play with stronger. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly, stronger. man. Right? I got to play with some amazing, amazing for, for you know, I, I, I played a nine, ten years, but like I got to play with like ten legends of the game. It was like Great. it was pretty cool. Like Mal- even Malkin, man, when Malkin yeah. was on. Remember those like when he when yeah. he would pick it up oh, back yeah. in his heyday? Holy shit. Wow. Well, uh, I so in 2000 uh the 2008-9 season obviously you got traded to Anaheim. Yeah. Be honest with me, how pissed were you? Cuz they go oh, on the win. It was crushing. It was crushing. Oh. Oh. I mean like it's crazy because it's hard to describe like I was I was really I was really happy for those guys. Like I was genuinely I was like, "Oh, I know so many of those guys they won the cup." But I was blatantly hoping they lost the finals. Like I, right. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, you know. Like well, you're a the, human. You're yeah. human. Being, I remember like. um first I got traded. My mom was dealing with like a, a real health scare. She had to have uh surgery, like a brain surgery, and I was home visiting her and I was sitting in the hospital room and my phone rang and it was Ray Cheryl. He's like, Ryan, I traded you. I was just like, Oh, oh like 
I'd, I'd been a part of this crew. And and what happened was like Latang was already coming on and he was younger. And I had signed a, a six year deal. And then Goligoski was coming on. And it was totally one of those things where like looking back now, like it made so much sense. Like you could you could trade this kid. Um, I also already had kind of had foot injuries and a surgery. And like you could trade this kid like who still probably has a good value and bring in this winger like Kunitz is like he was the perfect fit. It was unbelievable. Yeah, like, it, was the, was. it was one of the best trades in Penguins history. But just yeah. finding out and then Anaheim was in Boston randomly. I hadn't skated in four days and Ray's like, um, you know, they're going to Bob Murray's going to call you all time asshole. One of the biggest pricks. Oh, in the history really? Of hockey. So He's going to call you. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. Like, I, I really like Ray Cheryl. He was a, yeah. he was a classy guy. And um, and and Bob Murray called me and he's like, yeah, you're going to play tonight. I was like, what? I was like, dude, I don't even have like any. I didn't have anything. Like, I had my gear, but I hadn't skated. We lost like seven nothing to the Bruins. We got waxed. I didn't know one guy on the Ducks. I had no clothes. Oh, so I showed up in God. jeans and it, like a. Uh, normal shirt and like everyone's yeah. just like looking at me and then we went on the road for like we actually went on the road for like eight days which actually was good because i got to know guys on the road but yeah it was still like it's just anytime your your first trade you're just like holy shit so yeah then come to the playoffs we actually had a great anaheim team at the time we were sitting right around the playoffs but wisniewski got traded there as well i got traded there a couple other deals and then we went on a run and we had pronger and niedemeyer and yeah. Boschman. So mm. we would kind of play oh, yeah. 5D or Sheldon Brookbank was there. We had six solid D. Getzlaff that 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 year was incredible. Perry, Solani. It was like it was a good club. And we went, we beat San Jose, won the president's trophy, beat them, eight beat the one seed, and then yeah. went to game seven with Detroit. Danny Cleary scored scored with oh, two yeah. minutes left, game seven. Like That's we had funny. a I was like, holy shit, if we win this, Pittsburgh's moving on. Yeah. We could we could meet them somehow. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. But we lost. Pittsburgh keeps winning. And then game seven, Wings, Penguins come. And all my buddies came over, like my dad and uh, Mr. Yandel, Buddy Yandel was over. And as the Penguins won, as the, the clock, you know, struck zero and, and Fleury made that save on Lidstrom at the end, I just went down to my bedroom in my apartment and I was just like sobbing. Like my dad came down. Oh, he probably man. knew why I ducked out. I was just like, oh, my God. And Ryan Malone was the same. Ryan Malone wasn't traded midseason like me, but he had signed with Tampa that summer. After mm, right. after we lost, and and he was to say, I remember running into him or talking to him a couple of weeks later. He's like, "That was that was the worst night of my life." It was like I was like, "Let's just go out, boys." And I and I was really happy for the guys. I was I was right. I sent them all texts, but I was like, "Oh, it just feels like I should have been a part of that." So that yeah. was that was something that you'll you'll never really forget. Yeah, that that's tough, man. Yeah, God, yeah, and no Kunitz was so fucking good too. Like, <laughs> he was like such a big part of the team. That didn't like, help. That didn't help the situation. Like, yeah. We wouldn't have won it. We wouldn't have won it if I was there and he wasn't. So I guess that's easier to look at it that way. Oh man, <laughs> well, different perspective. Um, everyone gonna... always says, "Like, do you have a ring?" I'm like, "No." Like, I think baseball might do that. That if you were on the team that won it, even if you're trade, you get a ring. I'm like, "No," but I wouldn't even want a ring. Like, yeah, yeah. Would you even want it? You weren't. You weren't. Not if you. Yeah. No, you weren't in the no. mix. Come playoff time. No, you're yeah, right. it doesn't quite have the same feeling. No. no. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just. I'm no. like wearing it out and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just. <laughs> uh, so so I want to fast forward 20 uh, 2010 Olympics, man. Your name to the Olympic team, uh, obviously deservedly. Um, it was one of the best years of my life. We've talked about this a lot uh, because we had the outdoor game. We had the second ever outdoor game. Uh, in Boston, we played outdoor in Boston. Then uh, get to go to the Olympics. We eventually lost in the finals that year, which sucked, but it was still a great run. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Olympics. Uh, and I've never gone from such a high in the gold medal game when when Zach Prize scored yep. to literally like wanting to cry on the bench <laughs> when Sid scored. Like I I don't think my emotions have ever shot like that in my no. life. No, never. And that was. That was amazing. I, I was so lucky. I mean, it sucked for uh, Paul Martin. Paul Martin got hurt. I think he broke his arm. And then I got added to the team. Um, and then Komasarek got hurt. And I don't remember who they added with him. It might have been Gleason. I'm not exactly sure. But I was a late ad. And I was like, holy shit, this is unreal. And that was when I say the lockout was the funnest year I ever had. That was the best two weeks of my life. Like mm, that, that was 
the fact it wasn't in some shit city like Korea yeah. or whatever, like it was yeah. Vancouver, one of the nicest cities in the world in Canada. I mean, they had this incredible team. We beat them in the round robin. Kessler scored that one of the best empty net goals I've ever seen. And at that time, Kessler was like already giving it to Perry and Getzlaff. Yep. Like they had that war going on. So we beat them like panic was going on in Canada. Oh, yeah. And then we get <laughs> to the finals. And like you said, like, well, first off, throughout the week, it was great. We played like every third or fourth day. So yeah. we were going, we were ripping it up like after the game. Oh, boy. We were ripping it. It was yeah. like, it was like a, it was a Roxy like a action. Or, it was a bender. <laughs> exactly. It, and you know what? I, I've told people this winter, you know, we had our passes, you know, to get in, in and out of everywhere. That was like gold. Oh, I you bet. walked oh, to yeah. a bar, you had to keep it hidden because yeah. they were like, so people rip it right they told off. us, yeah. don't jerk it. But you, even a pigeon like me, I'm the goddamn equipment guy. <laughs> I'm walking in. Holding this up in the bag. Right here, big cat. <laughs> Here's a table. The Here's nature a table boy. Bottle. <laughs> oh, what a two. I've I've told I've said the same thing when it was it was insane. Like my liver by the end of that thing. <laughs> I remember still flushing it out. Oh boys. Sure. I, I, yeah. I went out the one night and we I think it was after a game, um, uh, after one of the games the day before, and we still had to go to the rink and everything. So I was like, I gotta meet me and Mikey. Uh are going to meet at like seven for breakfast. So I go out and I have a bunch of friends like that had a bunch of people in there that were working. Cause they would bring girls in to work all the bars. Right. Yeah. So oh, just yeah. friends that I had met from everywhere. Yeah. From everywhere. So like I'm with like literally with like eight checks, like just going bar, like going bar to bar, whatever. <laughs> so next thing I black out, like I, Overseer. I lost time. No, I just, I just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I lost, I lose time. And next thing you know, I wake up, I'm awake, but I'm like kind of like snap out of it and I'm dancing and all I have is a fur vest on <laughs> and my boxers. No way. And I'm At like with sunglasses. No, I was uh, in some apartment. Oh, some apartment. <laughs> and I'm like looking around and I'm like, what the fuck is it's going on here? Yeah. yeah. So the sun's coming up oh, and I'm yeah. like, what time is One it? One of those. And somebody's yeah. like, oh, it's like, you know, quarter of seven. And I'm like, I got to go. I got to meet Mikey for breakfast. So I'm like, I get dressed. I, I get like, a cab and I get back to the uh, village. But the funny part was this gentleman that I would see every day. He was actually from Chicago. You know how they flew people in there also like to work yeah. uh, the, the, uh, the village. He sees me and I think he thought I was, well, I know he thought I was a player and he was like, I look, I was so disheveled with her. I mean, imagine that I come, cruising up. I come cruising up and he goes, <laughs> Oh no, man, what are you doing? I said, like, what? He goes, we got a game tomorrow. You're just getting home. I was like, I don't play. He goes, Oh, okay. Thank God. Cause he was pulling for a US. You yeah. know, like, but uh man, it was nuts. But I wanted to ask you if you remember. So game one, we played Switzerland. They were our toughest games, too. Yeah. Uh, if they you remember, play we hard. played them twice. Yeah, they play so hard, but we're up two to one in the third. And I'll never forget this. And I'm not sure. I just remember thinking in my head, I've never seen anything like this. Torch is an assistant, John Torrell. Mm -hmm. Ron Wilson's our head coach, right? <clears throat> well, he puts Phil the Thrill out there. There's under two to go, and we're up a goal. And Torch goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> They're literally screaming at each other. And I'm like, I thought he was kidding. And he's like, Wells, what are you doing? He goes, he's fine. He knows what he's, because he played for him in T. Oh, yeah, time, right. right? Of course, said, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. Like, so I'm like watching. He's got Callie. He's got Callahan pulling him off the bench, going, <laughs> put him out there. Put him, get him off the eye. And I'm like, is this fucking, is anybody seeing this but me? And I was like, oh my fucking God. We ended up winning 3 1. I think we got an empty netter. If I'm not mistaken, Phil? when that gave three to one, Phil, I don't think yeah. it was Phil. I I loved I loved Torts. He was he was awesome. Like he was just a great. I remember one game might have been the first second game. He's like, I can't play you. I can't fucking put you back out there. To me, I'm like, I understand. I understand. <laughs> like you're not doing your job. I can't put you back out there. I'm like, all right, all right. I'll chill here. It's a great seat. Great seat. <laughs> great view. But, yeah, it was it was amazing. And and like yeah, when Zach tied it up, like. Buddy, intermission. I'm like, we got this game. This yep. whole country's silent right now. It and, was, and, and of course, it was, dude. Some people get that little tap from God when they're born. Like Crosby was scoring that goal. Like you look back, yep. like any anyone who wasn't thinking that is crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. He knew he was scoring. The rink knew he was scoring. <laughs> the country knew he was scoring. Everyone knew it, and he got it. Yeah, oh, that was man. oh, buddy. That was the worst. That was, you know what oh. though? Like a couple hours later. 
you know, it's like that was a great group of guys got the silver medal and, and we were this close. But it was still yeah. like after I think guys were proud of the. the oh, effort. yeah. And, and I mean, Canada was they were huge favorites that turn. Oh, Look at yeah. the team. Yeah. So it was it was it was it was a great run. That would have been something else, though. I would have had a I got a silver over there. Yeah. Everyone comes up. I'm like, yeah, it's the silver. If that was the gold, it'd be in like a locks lock <laughs> shape right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember. I remember you guys on the bench in the third going, we're going to get, we're going to get one. We're going to get one. We're going to, and they were so pot like, and we were on them. I mean, and, and like Luongo was looked a little shaky. Like he looked like he was fighting a bit. I know he ended up winning. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but like the guy, all you guys just kept, we're going to get one. We're going to get one. Fuck if we didn't. Yeah. And I'm like, we're going to win. We're going to fuck it. We're going to win the gold, man. <laughs> like we're going to win this thing. Um, and it was like, four. It was four on four. Yeah. Four, four, four on four. Yeah. That's that right. Probably helped them. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I, I remember too, what a real quick, uh, the first day when we were getting ready to play that first game, just walking out to the bench. There's actually a picture. Someone took a picture and sent it to me and just looking at the Olympic rings. And I'm just like, wow, like I, I watched this on TV. I got, not that I was playing, but I was at least with the team, you know, a part of it. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing I've ever like seen. Yeah. Like, I had chills. Like I was, just oh, like, this, it was it I was watched biggest... this when I'm a kid, man. It was the biggest rush, like whole yeah. I, I remember '98 when NHL players went. It was Japan, but it was just and then '02 in Salt Lake, like it was just yeah. like holy shit. I'm playing in the Olympics, and then um, that's why like on Chicklets, I'm I've been on I've been on. And granted, every fan's been like, we need best on best. So now, like in 2026 in Italy, that's gonna be that's gonna be some of the best, most like must watch hockey we've ever yeah. had. Oh, I will say though, we need Russia. Yeah, yeah you need, right. You need no Russia kidding. in that tournament, and you, and do. you could say what you want. It's not the same, dude. Remember that tournament because I think Canada. I don't remember how Russia lost. Uh, remember Ovi put that hit on Yager when they yeah. played Czech? Like you need Russia, dude. Like yeah, Kucherov, Vasilevsky. Like you need these guys. It's not. It's not the same without them. So who knows how it's gonna work out? But I don't think it'll be the same if they're not there. They just add an extra storyline or or yeah. seven storylines when they're right. in the tournament. You know, it's funny. You just said Kucherov. It just made it's way off topic. But I don't know if you. Saw, I know I sent you a picture the other night of uh, Hazy and and Shen, Braden Shen with, yeah. with my son. Did you see Hazy's goal that night? His breakaway. Oh, I I t I texted him. I go, that's the funniest goal I've ever seen. Hey, go, you know what? You go picked, and it just like went in somehow. Yeah, yeah. You know what he said? He comes into the. He comes to see me right after. He goes. How'd you like the Kucherov? That's yeah. my version. He said, <laughs> You're I, 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 that would have been an all-time blooper if it didn't go in. I know, it was like for sure. A pick on a breakaway. Oh, that was classy. That's my version of the of I was the pumped Kucherov. for him, though. He got one yeah. in Boston last night, too. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he sure did. Oh, man. So oh, one other thing about the Olympics. I got to – so – I introduced you to D's nuts then because <laughs> we were playing that in play. He hated it. Oh, he, yeah. fuck it. he tried to get me though every 10 minutes, <laughs> like, but I wanted to say we were at, you remember the night before the gold medal, they brought in that uh, young man, Josh Sacco was his name. He did the miracle speech. So uh, we were at a little Italian restaurant. Well, it wasn't that small, but we were at a Italian restaurant and they got the whole restaurant quiet. So this kid could do it. He was five years old. Right. So I was sitting beside you, and I don't know if you remember, but we're we're sitting there, and the kid starts with the speech, and it's the her, it's the you know from the miracle, yeah. uh, the movie, and it's he was actually really good. He's holding these papers, he's holding these little like sheets, but there's nothing on them. He's just like a coach holding them. Mm -hmm. So at one point, I think he says, "I'm sick of hearing about the Russians," and he hits he hits Langenbrunner, like gives him a little <laughs> yeah. push because he's our captain. Like he gives him this kid's this big, yeah. he's like tiny, <laughs> right? And he's you know you barely understand him, but he's saying it. And Winter, you lean over to me and you go, "What's the big fucking deal?" He's reading it. I said he's fucking five, <laughs> and half the table starts laughing. <laughs> Fuck you, baby. Like, oh, this guy bad. made me laugh. <laughs> it's a big deal. He's fucking reading. Was, like, yeah, like it, it, my my son's six and he couldn't do that. Like he couldn't even read. And this kid, I was chirping him. If, even if he was yeah. reading it, it was impressive. Yeah, it was. It was oh, funny. Man. I always laugh about that. It was so funny, man. That that, that was classic. the best. That was an amazing experience. Yeah, it like was. funny. Coach, I'll get texts from this guy like <laughs> four years later, like middle of the night. Like, buddy, I'm with your bro Ricky. And then I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I, no, no. 
<laughs> hey, listen, I know. I just because I just want to get him. I would get him. At, I got him at the Olympics. And everybody, <laughs> everybody was like jumping in on it. But I, I did get Carvin last week. And how funny was it? He lost his fucking mind. Nice try. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, That's in all seriousness, I, I thought he was going to bite. I got Scott Hartnell finally because he. He could he'd he be got tough me. to get. He'd be he, tough to get. I never got him until he was on the show. It was his third time he had joined us. Uh it was it was it last in the summer? Yeah, summer, yeah. And uh oh no, it was last his last season with Toronto was they struggled and then they got hot. And oh, he was right. like, I'm like, Can you believe everyone in Toronto? They're like, he's like, Yeah, they're fucking going nuts, man. I said, Yeah, I was talking to Savin last week and he was saying that. I mean, what did you think about what he said? And he's like, Who's that? And I went, he goes no he goes fuck you third and last time on the show <laughs> he was so mad at me oh fuck. i, I remember bringing this- it home and getting my buddies They're like what are you talking about like <laughs> yeah. they were just well, disgusted it's uh, the dumbest fucking thing ever is. but randy robitaille was the one that brought it to the flyers and he was only there for three months but he had everyone doing it and he was the he was the master i remember him saying <laughs> guys are going out we were playing in florida we're going out for the like warm-ups and he looks over at uh uh jeff center said he goes hey sandy did that bob busby coach you in junior he goes who <laughs> he goes these nuts motherfucker <laughs> you know guys are just crying they're like keep showing uh, your toes keep showing yeah, your toes big time yeah. Pretty sure. Remember, Hartsy showed up in playoffs there on the on the plane one year. The one year with the he had straightened his cur- curly hair and he wore this green it was shirt down to here, man. Yeah, it was like down to his nipples, and he had this green shirt. Was it, it have a chipmunk on it or is it it's D's, a nuts? D's nuts? Yeah, it's it's a D's nuts. On. <laughs> rolls on the plane. Had it made? Oh yeah, I don't know where he found it. Yeah, I don't that was either, classic. Man. Oh, oh man. My. hey, that's the shit you miss though. Just the locker it room. Is. You're yeah. just torturing yeah. each other. You're not kidding, man. Yeah. Ugh. Uh so so uh are you are you going with Edmonton? Is that what you're doing? I am. I am. I can't not. It's going to be an absolute battle though. I mean, I hope I hope somehow they could play LA in the first round. That'd be 3 years in a row. Um I would be surprised if Vegas doesn't hop into that third seed in the Pacific, but playing them in the first round will be like the worry is that even if they get by them, like how much does that take out of you mm-hmm. trying to beat Vegas? And their and their and their L.A. Dodgers payroll. So yeah. I don't know. Like <laughs> I saw I your rant just, the other day. That was great. You're on the couch I was just there. like, and and it's funny on the show yesterday. Like I I addressed it because I'd said the week before, don't be mad at the team. It's the league. This is a rule. Like they're actually not breaking a rule. But then they got hurdle like last minute. And I was just like these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but but in the end, like it is it is. I say I said this. Anyone who's dogging them would be so happy if their team was doing that. It's like, yeah. right. You, if, if, if your team's doing it, you're loving it. But it's just, it's, they figured out a, a way to just spend big, make big deals, not worry about the future and go for it every year. That's like every fan's dream. Right. Now, at right. some point, this is going to come back to bite them. Might be in five years, but at some point, they're going to be in the dark days the way Pittsburgh's headed. But yeah. it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you beat them right now because they're not only like loaded up front, but they're dear huge. That's what I noticed last year. I remember the playoffs ended. Eichel was saying like, we could play another round. Like Florida had like guys with like one arm playing. Yeah. Couldn't even move. And Vegas is so big and strong and deep. Like they was, he's like, dude, we're everyone's healthy. It was just like, what are you going to, what are you going to do against that? But Biz said maybe the hockey gods, maybe the karma in the game of hockey will have them somehow miss the playoffs. I don't see that happening, but but they're yeah. going to be a force. And, yeah, I'm on Edmonton, but the West is just so loaded. You beat yeah. Vegas, then you got Van or uh, you got maybe probably Van, and then yeah. you, you somehow win that, and you got Colorado or Dallas or Winnipeg. It's like. Yeah, no, that's the truth. I didn't think about that. I, I real quick, I just want to say uh, Chris Knobloch, what a job he's done coming oh in there. God. I mean, holy f- and we had him, you know, he was an assistant here with the Flyers when I, oh, when no, I was, I didn't know yeah, that. for a couple of years. Yeah. And, and, and then uh, he went to Erie. You know, he was in, um, no, he was in Erie first, first yeah. and then he came here. Okay. okay. Uh, Hexy hired him and what a, what a great guy. I mean, what a nice man he is. Great, great guy. Anyway, I was so happy for him. Um, he really, boy, he got them going. Jeez. Jesus, man. I mean, like, I, I, it's not just him, but you know what I mean. Like, you no, figured for something sure. out. And, he, and I think, like, Paul Coffey came in. Yeah. And he yeah. has D, like, 
really focusing on making tape to tape passes. Like with those forwards, it's kind of like Toronto. They got all these D, but besides Morgan Riley, like they're kind of guys who chip it out. But Edmonton's worked with the guys to like get these dudes to puck with speed in the neutral zone. And then that creates, I mean, since he's come, they've been the they've had the best record in the league since November. Yeah, so sure. it's just it's just gonna be about like can Leon and Connor just like throw on the 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 superhero costume again in the playoffs? Like Leon in the playoffs, every playoff he's he's unstoppable. Right. I mean, his goals per game in the playoffs out of control and and, and McDavid's McDavid. So I think I think they definitely have a chance. It's just going to be an absolute battle to get there. Um, yeah, for sure. And then uh, were you surprised at all by the Flyers? Last thing I was, man, I said, I said, I said like two weeks into the season, ah, oh, this will end. I said a month and a half into the season, ah, oh, this will end. And then at some point you just got to tip your cap because yeah, uh, I was saying too, like Torts is the perfect guy for that job because if Torts was on a team with crazy high expectations, he would always be fighting with like, you're not as good as you think. You're not as good as you think. But if you get him on a team where he's like, everyone's saying you guys suck. Everyone's saying this is going to be a lottery team. Like he's just the perfect voice to mm -hmm. be in a room where there's no expectations. And then he can also be demanding and, and expect a lot out of guys, but remind them like you're supposed to be shit. And I guess looking yeah. back, all, all the all the pundits like myself, like we didn't know what we were talking about. I think Couturier coming back was the biggest yeah. thing. Right. Yep. Like there's a reason he's captain now. He's just like a pro's pro. He plays both sides of the ice and, and then they've gotten goaltending, but they've been through a lot and they're still right there. And I mm -hmm. think it's better off when the Flyers are good. When the Flyers are in the playoffs and they're like a top team, that's, the league wants that. They would never admit it, but it's a fact, it's a huge market. So yeah. I, I'm excited. And I mean, where they're going, it, it looks pretty crazy. The prospects they have and it's a good time. They, they, it looks like they're going to be able to kind of do that quick rebuild. I know it's been a while, but they never went down to really, really horrible. I guess last year and the year before it was tough days, but it wasn't like what looks like San Jose. It's going to be seven years. Yeah, so right. Wow. So that's it's good. It's good. The flyer, yeah. the Flyers being good and, and being a, a team in the playoffs is better for the league. I agree. Yeah, for sure. What were your, what were your thoughts on torts the other night? You think, oh, uh, was, I'm not. I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not, that was <laughs> fucking hilarious. Like the fact that it. his Stanley Cup team from Tampa oh, was there, so good. Yeah. and like the camera panning over to like Andrew <laughs> yeah. Tuck and Frederick Modine just dying laughing with wine, and then <laughs> yeah. and then Biz mentioned too, like Torts has like the cast on his hand, and he's yeah, it, out of his cast. <laughs> it was it was a stiff penalty though. It was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. two games and 50K, it's like, I know, I don't know. That's kind of hard to, to wrap your head around, but yeah. an all time torts moment from a guy who has like 15 of them, too. Yeah, I right. was reading it's his 13th fine. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's hilarious. That. That's, awesome. That's a lot of cake to be given up, but I mean, like, I, uh, I've never seen that. I've never I, seen a coach pick. I'm not leaving. And then I'm, I was like, what if he just like wouldn't leave? I guess they wouldn't have dropped the puck. They wouldn't yeah. have, no. Every 30 seconds or minute that went on was just probably another game suspension. Another game, so yeah, exactly. At some point. How dramatic but it do you was, make it this? was I, I love Wes McCauley, but like I was surprised he wouldn't go over and talk to him. Right. That's all he was yelling. He's like, I want to talk to him. And he's like, Nope. Beat it. Go to the run showers. Along. Yeah, oh, run yeah. Along. yeah, that was classic. I wonder if he actually thought that if he just stood there long enough that the, the, the refs <laughs> <laughs> just let him stay. I think the That's wires are that. crossing. The wires yeah. are oh, yeah. so bad. And he's like, I'm not leaving. And then it probably like slowed down. He's like, oh, I have to leave. <laughs> uh, yeah, I better, I better go. I better go, yeah. <laughs> better go now. You can kind of see it in his eyes. Like he was like, oh, you know, pumping yeah. the chest, pumping the chest. You can see slowly but surely. <laughs> there. Was he was recognizing that he had to leave. You're like, oh, God. Oh, my God. I actually what, do what, what, what is his injury? I don't. I don't even. I don't know. know. I have I no idea. Even ask. I he saw was in a sling, sling. <laughs> and then he's out of the sling, but he's got a cast. I'm like, what happened to this guy? <laughs> fucking gonna jab West with that fucking thumb <laughs> yeah, right? there. <laughs> Your thumb. Oh <laughs> man. Hey, Winter. We can't thank you enough. We know oh, you're busy, fuck. man. Taking the time. Uh, no, anytime, boys. This was a blast. I yeah. appreciate it. Great no, seeing and talk to you. Not big time in me today. You're you're a big timer now. You know that. I I, I try not to be. I'm just a, no, the most unorganized person in the world, dude. I apologize for that. No, I you're the man. for anyone listening, I changed the time of this interview about seven times. I'm an absolute <laughs> moron. I need to, I was actually saying to my wife, like, can you hire like an organized coach? She's like, What are you talking about? I'm like, I'm just never organized. So oh, I appreciate man. you guys having me on though. You guys do awesome no. stuff. Happy for both you guys and, and thank, thank you, man.
Big thank you to Ryan Whitney. Wetter. Wetter. Oh, man. Big timer. I mean that in a good way. Like, like we talked about that, you know, it's cool. They started kind of like we did, you know, just like, hey, like this would be cool. Keep us in hockey. Talk about hockey. But obviously they have a lot of help with Barstool behind you. Um, but, man, they, they do a great job. And he's a great guy. Yeah. I no. really enjoyed uh, once I got to know him and at the Olympics and everything. Like, he's a, he's a great guy. Yeah. Funny, witty, witty guy. Yeah, no, no right. He's intended. a great, great talker. And yeah. Good energy. And yeah. obviously him and Biz and, and the rest of the crew there is busting yeah. on each other. Is, uh, makes for a hell of a podcast. It so is they're, they're very good. Great job in the hockey world. and Yeah. Continued success. Yep. Great guy. Appreciate his time. Mm-hmm. It's that time, Mass. Now? <laughs> Hell yeah. Already? Is it time for the clear questions? It is. Clear questions, Debo. Wake it up. Brought to you by Clear Rum. Go to clearrum.com slash shop. Put in the code NASTY2023. Get 35% off Ooh. of your order. PA residents only. Baller, hit us up, baby. What's up, boys? We got old hammy. Ham Daddy? Oh, oh hamstring. Oh, yeah. oh. He's here. <laughs> Got a tight one right now. <laughs> yeah, you do. He's leading us off over on Instagram, and he would like to know, what's the best story of finding someone in the locker room getting an ejection? Uh, I'm assuming you mean after they were ejected from the game, <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, I know one that really sticks out for me is uh, when uh, – God rest him, uh, Ray Emery went after Holpe because the game had gotten out of hand. And mm -hmm. he just happened to be Holpe down there. It didn't matter who it was going to be, yeah. but he, he happened to be there. And uh, Ray went down and, and uh, gave him a couple righties, a couple lefties, <laughs> maybe two. I, mean, I think he's still he, dealing with some PTSD yeah, from that. <laughs> he, got, uh, he got tossed, and I remember running back and just – Check, you know, make well, obviously I knew he was okay, but just to go in and I walked in the room and he was, you know, he's sweating, he's just taking his chest protector off. And I just look over at him and he like looks up, sees me, just that grin, you yeah. know, razor's grin, he starts smiling. I'm like, What'd you say to him, Reg? Yeah. You know, the lying out of slap shot, what'd you say to him, Reg? And he, yeah, he said, I, I told him we're going and. <laughs> Braden Holby said, no, we're not. No, no. He goes, well, then protect yourself because I'm, I'm grabbing you. Wow. Um, but that's one of the – that's when it really sticks out to me uh, about after a guy getting ejected. Yeah. Yeah, usually guys are – when they get ejected, they're they're fired up and, yeah. like, angry. <laughs> he was case, lying. He was, he's, like, he just, like, he's probably just laughing at himself. Yeah. Just, just, just wiping the ice up with – Wires got oh, got, got crossed got there. Crossed there. That might have been one of the biggest – Turned our it turned us around. Actually, we went on a, on a streak after. That. I know a lot of people didn't you know thought it was ugly. Yeah, not right, Unnec but unnecessary. Hope he laughed about it after he was fine. So yeah, you know. But he was trying to get the boys going, yeah. and I had said it was funny that year. I I, I was like, when are you gonna have a Tilly? You're in, Fi you're yeah, in right. Philadelphia, you know, like, and you haven't had a tilt here yet. Well, he did. He did. Yeah, <laughs> he did. It's impressive. Yeah. We got Philly Fan 2001 over on Twitter. He's wondering, was there a defining moment that made you guys want to call Philadelphia home? It's a great question. Yeah, it really is. I'm not sure if there's a defining moment. I, I feel like I was born to be in this space, this area, from when Hexy called me back in 2004. 2005 lockout season yeah. when I was in the Central Hockey League, you know, I yep. probably that moment, honestly, I just felt like, you know, knowing what I knew of the Flyers and then joining the Phantoms and just knowing and learning more about the Broad Street Bullies and the culture of the Flyers. I mean, it's like, fuck, this is, this seems to be the perfect place for me. Right. So I think like as, you know, that season went on, we went to Calder Cup and then I landed up signing, you know, NHL deal with the Flyers. I think it was probably like, cool. I got, I don't want to go anywhere else. Right. Um, obviously, in sports, you sometimes don't have the luxury to, to choose. But right. I mean, um, I retired a flyer and landed up coaching the Flyers minor league team. So naturally, I mean, the, this area is what I consider home. I mean, right. I've made a living here and uh, built an identity here, and you know, want to do good as much as as, as I can, good in the community here. So. Yeah. It's definitely home. How about you, Nast? And you do. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I was fortunate enough when I was a kid. My dad worked for the Flyers for a long time, so <clears throat> I was obviously familiar with the area. I would come up two, three times a year. But uh, I guess when we came back, you know, uh, we were down in Florida that first year with Bob Clark, uh, the inaugural season of the Philadelphia or the Florida Panthers, sorry. And then we got here, and it just seemed right, and then obviously worked here for twenty the next 25 years. Um, so I've been here longer than I was in North Carolina, yeah. you know, growing up. So it's just home, yeah. you know, and it's, like you said, it's just a, I like it here. Yeah. I enjoy it here. I've had, you know, a couple chances I could have gone somewhere else, and I'm glad I didn't. Your pillar. <laughs> I don't know about that. But no? Eh, you know. Your staple here in the area. Sta- I'm a staple, all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, but great question. Mm-hmm. We got one more. Rich, not in Canada, over on Twitter. Real talk, new coach or different lineup, who will be able to fix the power play? Man. Yeah. I, you know, like, I feel bad for Rocky because, like, he's such a good dude, and mm-hmm. I know that doesn't right. mean you keep someone because they're a good dude, but it really is struggling. And I, I don't know. I mean, you, you played the game. What You know, what do you think? Well, listen, I mean, there's, there's the guy that runs the power play – meetings but then they're all huddling up in the office together right, right. i mean torts still has a say in the power play right he can only right. show so much video and you know address so many different parts of the game but like i'm not sure if this is a rocky thompson issue right yeah right exactly. i mean it's like you've seen this with joey mullen like how many years they had great you know he power plays and every then, year and then, and then he got let go yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> They were, we're in the top struggling. ten every year. Yeah, and then I think well, this last year they ended up struggling a little bit, but still like still effective power play. Um, you know, to me, you look at the teams with the the best power plays, like there's they just have slightly more skill. True. You know. Um, yeah. And yes, you can coach and coach and coach you know what you with what you got but like i think at some point it maxes out to what you're able to produce right i mean right. Like, so you don't show so much video and practice so much if you know like i i don't know you bring in paul coffee you bring in whoever you, you know name that high-end right. d power play guy coach i'm not sure i'm not sure how much better it gets Again, right torts uh, is in these meetings yeah exactly you know, like, I, I was gonna say unfortunately you, you, that's a great point by you, but it usually is the coach that gets oh, tossed. Oh, yeah, yeah, for you know sure. The I mean? coach always gets tossed, but, yeah. But you're right. You know, you, you 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 give them what you think they should do, and, and a lot of these guys are creative enough. They probably say, hey, what if but what if we do that? You know, Claude was unbelievable. Oh, totally, yeah. Running their that. own meetings he would, I literally watched Claude design a play. Yeah, sure. Like, on, more than once oh, on, yeah. on the bench, and it worked. And that's what – you need, you but need you, that interaction with the players. But he's a special, special player. Yeah. Even if there's some haters of him, but, like, you can't deny him on the power. Like, yeah. he's – you know, whatever, but yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't know if it's well. You're not going to add any players now because <laughs> the deadline's over. But um, it's not like we have terrible players that don't have any skill. We do, but something in order for them to get into these playoffs, like we hopefully the number yeah. raises a little bit because we got to get some goals, uh, power you know power play goals. Yeah, you know, you, you think of like again the, the high end playoff or the high end power play teams like. You know, a guy like Mitchkoff when he got lines up coming, like you know, right. like these high end skill guys. Like yes. these are the guys, like these are the guys that change that. They do, yeah. you know, because right. they because their their execution's so high, you know, and they're so right. creative that they can f- f- find these seams. And not that these guys can't, but like you know what I'm talking about. Like you know, l- look at the you know dry you know dry side oh, yeah. like you know what i mean you go down the list yeah, of like these teams yeah. it's like you got guys like just like super elite guys that can pasta po- yeah exactly you know, just Marshawn. Like, um, yeah it makes a difference that's it, it, sure. it makes a difference because you're talking about yeah just squeezing in like one extra goal a game right it's just one extra feathered pass in there you yeah. know just because the skill level is so high um to me that's what i see like, I, I think too like you know we don't want to get too impatient with these younger guys because they are some skilled players. Yeah. Frost, Faraby, yeah. uh, Brink, you know, like I think it's going to come more they play as well, you know, and, and hopefully it gets better, you know, down the stretch here because we're going to need it because teams are trying to sneak in and the Islanders are yeah. chasing. So we got to score more goals. Yeah, that's it, right? 
That's it's how you win. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's great a bold shit. strategy, oh, Cotton. It's bold. It's bold. <laughs> yeah. But a great question. Yeah, it is. Thanks. Yeah. And that's a wrap, Nast. 150. Can you believe that? No, I can't. It's crazy. It's, says, people says it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, 150. Yeah. It's been a it's been a nice run. It's been a nice run. Hopefully we keep going for a long time. Oh yeah. Appreciate everyone. All the yeah. support. Absolutely. Be sure to continue to subscribe, like, comment, ask questions. Please. Appreciate the support. Until next week for 151. Stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.